हेलो एंड वेलकम स्वागत है आप सबका फिजियोलॉजी की पाठशाला की क्लिनिकल केस सीरीज में और आज हम बात करेंगे एक बहुत ही इंपॉर्टेंट कंडीशन की जो कि एक मेडिकल इमरजेंसी भी है एंड दैट इज अक्यूट मायोकार्डल इन्फेक्शन और ए एम इन शॉर्ट वीडियो में आगे बढ़ने से पहले आप सभी से रिक्वेस्ट है कि अगर आपको आज का वीडियो पसंद आए इन्फॉर्मेटिव लगे तो प्लीज लाइक शेयर और सब्सक्राइब करना बिल्कुल ना भूलें तो चलिए मिलते हैं हमारे आज के पेशेंट से A 50-year-old obese businessman who is a known hypertensive and chronic smoker since the last 10 years is brought to the emergency by his wife. Presenting complaints of the patient are stabbing retrosternal chest pain radiating to left little finger with severe nausea and profuse sweating. As reported by the patient's wife, since the last 2-3 weeks the patient has frequent episodes of mild moderate chest pain and tightness while returning from his daily routine morning walks on examination the doctor finds that the patient is restless and has a sense of impending doom his pulse is feeble 120 per minute blood pressure is 150 by 106 mm of mercury and respiratory rate is 28 per minute the patient has bilateral pitting type ankle edema investigations reveal a raised level of cardiac troponins and a normal fasting blood sugar level ecg shows hyperacute t waves the probable diagnosis is acute myocardial infarction let's review those two three clincher points in the history and examination on the basis of which we have arrived at this diagnosis number 1 were the typical presenting complaints that is stabbing radiating chest pain with severe nausea diaphoresis that is profuse sweating and impending doom means intense fear of death investigations reveal raised cardiac troponins and hyperacute t waves along with cardiac signs that is ankle edema tachypnea and rapid feeble pulse and associated risk factors for coronary artery disease that is obesity and smoking now as you all might be knowing ami is a variant of coronary artery disease or ischemic heart disease the other one being angina pectoris and the commonest cause for coronary artery disease is atherosclerosis atherosclerosis se matlab kya hai an abnormal deposition of lipids within the vascular lumen especially of the coronary arteries due to which the heart's blood supply is compromised aur ye jo atherosclerotic changes hain they occur over a period of many years as you can see in this image the progression takes almost 30 to 40 years before the first attack of the mi agar aap in sare steps ko thoda study karna chahte hain to aap is video ko yahi pe pause bhi kar sakte hain now coronary artery disease it progresses over three stages usually the first stage is that of stable angina jiske andar blockage less than 80% hota hai aur in cases mein patient ko jo cardiac pain hoga that occurs with exertion and usually it is relieved with rest patients usually do not take any medications for their pain then as the condition progresses it becomes unstable angina in which the blockage reaches around 80 to 90% the pain occurs even on rest and is relieved only with medication such as nitrates and nitroglycerin if the condition is ignored it will progress into full fledged ami in which the blockage crosses 95 to 99 percent barrier and in this case the cardiac pain can occur at any time and it is unrelieved even with medication now mi usually involves the anterior lateral part of the heart which is none other than the, than the wall of the left ventricle itself aur ye jo hissa hai heart ka it is perfused by the left anterior descending branch of the left coronary artery because of its unique anatomical location this artery is very commonly exposed to the blockage by atheromatous plaques let's review the clinical features of ami in brief the first and the foremost is the retrosternal chest pain ab ye jo chest pain hai ye mimic karta hai heartburn ko <coughs> aur isiliye in patients mein antacid abuse bahut zyada dekha jata hai This pain is a kind of radiating pain in which the pain can be felt not only behind the sternum but also towards the tip of the left shoulder 
and along the entire inner aspect of the left arm till the tip of the left little finger. इसके अलावा कुछ less common sites भी हैं radiation की. These are the inner aspect of the right arm, neck and the angle of the jaw, epigastrium and even at the back. Remember that चाहे angina हो चाहे MI हो, cardiac pain is retrosternal and burning type. But MI के pain की तीन characteristics ऐसी हैं जिससे हम उसको angina के pain से differentiate कर सकते हैं. वो कौन सी हैं? Number one, the cardiac pain in MI is very severe and prolonged. It is not relieved by rest. And lastly, it is accompanied with severe nausea, anxiety and fear of impending death. और ये चीजें एंजाइना में नहीं देखी जाती हैं। Besides cardiac pain, two more important features which are seen in AMI are pulmonary edema which leads to breathlessness or dyspnea and swelling in the ankle region because of ineffective cardiac pumping action and resulting stasis of the blood flow. The doctor should go for these important investigations in a case of AMI. We will be discussing them in brief one by one. Besides the routine blood tests such as hemogram, CBC and all, we also go for the lipid profile of these patients and it usually reveals that the serum cholesterol, lipoproteins, triglycerides and LDL fractions are raised but the good cholesterol that is the HDL fraction is lowered. Fasting blood sugar will be raised only in cases of coexisting diabetes otherwise it may be normal. Then are the serum biomarkers in which the first one is serum myoglobin. Serum myoglobin is the first one to rise that is within 30 minutes of the onset of the symptoms but it declines after 24 to 48 hours and is also elevated in myopathy because of which it is not considered diagnostic. However, it is an important screening test in AMI patients. Besides this, there are two other non-specific biomarkers for AMI patients. The first one being creatinine phosphokinase myocardial fraction and the other one being lactate dehydrogenase. Now both these enzymes can be raised in conditions which are not involving the myocardium or some other conditions of the heart not essentially AMI such as pericarditis etc. The most important biomarker for AMI patients are cardiac troponins such as cardiac troponin I and cardiac troponin T. They rise within 2 to 3 hours of onset of symptoms and they peak within 12 to 48 hours. They are considered gold standard diagnostic test for MI patients. But aisa kyun? Because of two main reasons. Number one being they rise 20 times even in case of small infarcts. And secondly, they remain elevated for 7 to 10 days. So, agar koi patient hospital mein late bhi report karta hai, even then the doctor can suspect that the attack of AMI has already taken place based on the raised levels of cardiac troponins. Now, what are the ECG changes in MI? There are four kinds of ECG changes which are commonly seen. Number one are the hyperacute T waves and especially in the limb leads. Limb leads mein T waves jo hai, they are usually around 5 small squares in amplitude, not more than that. But in case of AMI, the amplitude crosses this limit. Second is the ST elevation or J point elevation. Number three is the T wave inversion. And lastly are the pathological Q waves. Pathological Q wave kya hai? When the depth of the Q wave, it is more than the one fourth of the R wave height in the same lead. अब सवाल यहाँ ये उठता है कि क्या ये चारों तरह के चेंजेस एक साथ देखे जाएंगे? नहीं। It will depend कि ECG अटैक के कितने टाइम के बाद ली गई है पेशेंट में। As you can see in this slide, there is a definite timeline 
ऑफ अकरेंस ऑफ दीज ई सी जी चेंजेस डिपेंडिंग ऑन द टाइम इलेप्स्ड एंड आई वुड एडवाइस कि आप यहाँ पे वीडियो को पॉज करके इस टाइम लाइन को डिटेल में स्टडी कर सकते हैं याद रखने वाली चीज यहाँ ये है कि आफ्टर अ फ्यू मंथ्स और इवन सम ईयर्स द ई सी जी बिकम्स टोटली नॉर्मल एक्सेप्ट फॉर वन चेंज विच परसिस्ट थ्रू आउट लाइफ इन एम आई पेशेंट एंड दैट इज दूवेव पैथोलॉजिकल क्यूवेव एक और चीज है जो ध्यान देने वाली है कि क्या ये जो ई सी जी चेंजेस है ये बारह की बारह लीड्स में होंगे अगेन द आंसर इज नो कौन सी लीड्स के अंदर ये ई सी जी चेंजेस देखे जाएंगे ए एम आई के जो टिपिकल ई सी जी चेंजेस है विल डिपेंड की कौन सा एरिया हार्ट का इन्वॉल्व है इन्फॉक्शन में और कौन सी लीड ओवरलाई कर रही है उस इन्फॉक्टेड एरिया को सो द कोडिंग एरिया कोडिंग ऑफ दीज ई सी जी लीड्स हैज बीन गिवन इन दिस इमेज एंड यू कैन जस्ट अगेन पॉज दिस वीडियो एंड स्टडी की लेटरल ए एम आई के केस के अंदर कौन सी लीड्स के अंदर चेंजेस आएंगे एंटीरियर ए एम आई के अंदर कौन सी लीड्स इन्वॉल्व होंगी और इंफीरियर ए एम आई में कौन सी लीड्स इन्वॉल्व होंगी नेक्स्ट इन्वेस्टिगेशन इज चेस्ट एक्सरे चेस्ट एक्सरे की फाइंडिंग्स डिपेंड करती हैं कि ए एम आई का अटैक फर्स्ट टाइम है या एक रिकरेंट अटैक है इन केस ऑफ फर्स्ट अटैक फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ द केसेस विल हैव नो फाइंडिंग इन दियर चेस्ट एक्सरे बट इन द रिमेनिंग फिफ्टी परसेंट केसेस द हार्ट साइज इज नॉर्मल अलॉन्ग विद पायलेटरली सिमेट्रिकल पलमनरी एडिमा विच गिवस द अपियरेंस ऑफ बैट विंग और बटरफ्लाई विंग इन केस ऑफ पेशेंट हु आर हैविंग रिकरेंट अटैक्स ऑफ ए एम आई अलॉन्ग विद पलमनरी एडिमा कार्डियो मेगैली इज ऑल्सो सी द नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट इन्वेस्टिगेशन इज इको कार्डियोग्राफी बिसाइड्स आइडेंटिफाइंग द एरिया इन्वॉल्व वन मोर इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग विच इज ऑप्टेन फ्रॉम इको कार्डियोग्राफी इज द इजेक्शन फ्रैक्शन एंड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ द वैल्यू ऑफ इजेक्शन फ्रैक्शन द डॉक्टर कैन क्वांटिफाई द एक्सटेंट ऑफ द कार्डिक डिसफंक्शन एज यू कैन सी फ्रॉम द टेबल गिवन ऑन योर स्क्रीन राइट नाउ and in patients where the ejection fraction falls below 35% it indicates a very severe cardiac dysfunction a recent investigation which has become popular in ami cases involves the use of radio isotopes such as thallium 201 and technetium 99 and what is done is that special gamma cameras are placed on the chest while thallium and technetium are injected in the coronary vessels two kinds of color coded images they are obtained one of the colored areas is blue which indicates the ischemic cardiac areas with a low uptake of thallium 201 and the other kind of colored area is marked in red or orangish color and are labeled as hot spots which are actually the infarcted myocardium areas with a high uptake of technetium 99 medical management of ami involves a five pronged strategy first and the foremost is giving morphine to the patient for controlling the pain and anxiety then is the reperfusion therapy which involves inhalational oxygen and vasodilators such as nitrates then comes the hypolimitic drugs such as statins for treating the disturbed lipid profile then because of the ischemia of the conducting tissue of the heart these patients are very prone for cardiac arrhythmias for which we have to give anti arrhythmics also there is an increased tendency for clot formation in these patients for which clot retardants such as antiplatelets aspirin clopidogrel antithrombotics such as low molecular weight heparin warfarin and thrombolytics such as tpa and streptokinase are given in fact aspirin in low doses is given lifelong to these patients for prophylaxis surgical management of ami involves two options the first one being coronary artery bypass grafting in this procedure one of the peripheral veins from the legs it is taken and a portion of it is sutured to the root of the aorta and the other end is sutured just beyond the obstructed part of the coronary vessel 
This results in reperfusion of the previously ischemic region. The second intervention which is done in AMI cases is coronary balloon angioplasty with stenting. And as you can see on your screens, कि इसके अंदर क्या है कि एक कार्डिक कैथीटर के ऊपर एक इन्फ्लेटेबल बलून होता है जिसके अराउंड एक कलेप्सिबल मैश लाइक स्टेंट होता है और व्हेन द कैथीटर इज पास ओवर दी एथेरोस्क्लेरोटिक एरिया बलून को इन्फ्लेट कर दिया जाता है जिससे कि जो मैश है वो एक्सपैंड कर जाती है और फिर बलून को और कैथीटर को विड्रॉ कर लिया जाता है और स्टेंट वहीं पर रुक जाता है एंड इट कीप्स द एरिया डायलेटेड दस रिमूविंग दी ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन Lastly, we'll discuss the complications of AMI, and there are three main complications of AMI. First is if the area affected is more than 40% of the left ventricular wall, it will result in a severe reduction in cardiac output. The condition being called cardiogenic shock. Then is the ischemia of the conducting tissue, which can result in cardiac arrhythmias. And the third complication is a very serious one, which is the cardiac rupture. and it results because the infarcted tissue is very weak and when during systole it undergoes contraction or during diastole there is excessive stretching of the cardiac wall it can even rupture resulting in instantaneous death of the patient so ummeed hai ki aapko aaj ka video pasand aaya hoga aur aapko kuch interesting cheeze bhi pata chali hongi agar ha to please like share aur subscribe karna bilkul na bhule मिलेंगे अगली बार एक और नए वीडियो में तब तक के लिए गुड बाय एंड टेक केयर